the sacred workspace. If every moment is sacred, and if you are amazed and in awe most of the time when you find yourself breathing and not crazy, then you are in a state of constant thankfulness, worship, and humility. Bernice Johnson Reagan. I spent a few years working as a professor in child and adolescent development at San Francisco State University. During my time there, I decided to curate a non-traditional workspace for myself. Discarding my idea of what a typical college professor's office should look like, I tailored my office to meet my own needs and style choices, filling the room with bold colors and bohemian print fabrics, cozy throw pillows, fairy lights, and a vibrant tarot deck. I hung illustrations and inspirational quotes on the walls. I made these style choices to promote my own well-being, but I noticed a positive impact on my students as well. I held regular office hours and had an open door policy for students. I was there to discuss assignments, but I also supported the case and case managed students who were first generation college students and helped direct them to tutoring, counseling, and financial resources on campus so they could get the most of their college experience and graduate without delays. The warmth and texture that my office provided helped my students to feel welcome and cared for. Sharing snacks or tea there also worked to break down barriers so that I could serve my students more effectively. My office was an extension of my work and aligned with the legacy that I wanted to leave on the campus and in students' lives. The space nurtured and held me and my work and in turn created a nurturing environment in my professional ecosystem. That office was a sacred workspace for me. For many of us, work is a place we spend most of our waking hours doing things we'd rather not be doing. What would happen if we brought our sacred well-being and our daily work lives just a step closer? In my experience, the results can be profound. Think of how you feel when you enter a space you love, a cherished family member's kitchen, an art gallery, a religious sanctuary. What do you feel when you walk into a space that is aligned, when its people, design, energy, and mission all seem to sing in harmony. Calm, energized, curious, empowered. These spaces don't have to be fancy. You can just feel the special energy of a place that is practical, embodied, and sacred all at once. We spent a lot of this book focused on you, what you feel like, your history, and your habits. Now it's time to expand that awareness into the spaces in which you live and work. Your relationship to your workspace is directly tied to your quality of life, mental health, well-being, and overall productivity. Part of reimagining our relationship to work is to reimagine our office space and center its impact on our well-being. When we take time to cultivate a sacred workspace, we acknowledge our humanity and our right to thrive at work in a small but powerful way. Having a space that makes you feel happy, uplifted, and energized can alleviate work-related trauma and stress. It can also promote a productive work environment by reducing energy drags, boosting your mood, and helping you to feel good about focusing on and completing necessary tasks. Cultivating a sacred workspace can tap into the formidable energy of visualization and manifestation. Preparing an abundant, flowing workspace can work to mirror and attract the professional life of your dreams. This chapter will walk you through some of the basics of creating a sacred workspace, including assessing the strengths and opportunities within your current setup, how to cleanse your workspace and set intentions to get what you need, and how to enhance your work environment using nature's four elements. Workspace Assessment Take a moment to reflect on how your workspace is currently structured. Notice how it enhances or takes away from your workflow. Most often, when we think about our workspace, we're thinking of optimizing it for productivity. This assessment looks at more than that and raises the bar. 
How can your workspace enhance your overall joy and well-being? To start, look at your current workspace. How does it make you feel? Write at least three sentences to describe the space and any emotions it brings up. For example, maybe your space is cluttered and you feel cooped up. Or maybe your space is full of light and you feel alert and awake while you're there. Now, single out three of the most undesirable items in your workspace. Name them and say why you feel they are undesirable. For example, maybe the fluorescent lights give you a headache or your books are spread out everywhere and you can't find what you need. Next, imagine the workspace of your dreams. Take some time with this one, starting with a minute or two of meditation with your eyes closed. Visualize an ideal work day from start to finish. What do you see? What do you feel? What are you doing? Let the answers you gave in this assessment be your launching pad for creating a workspace that embodies the professional life of your dreams. If it was easy to zero in on the negative aspects of your workspace, try to locate the items that take away from your joy and remove or modify them. Start with the things you interact with every day. Look at your desktop. Maybe you have a pencil cup that's boring and only half of the writing implements work. Is there another container that you can use to create a more vibrant place to reach for pens and pencils? Can you take five minutes and clear whatever's in there that you don't like or don't use? I have a friend who says you should always invest in a garbage can you love. It may sound silly, but anything you use every day that's ugly or that you don't like will wear your energy on a subliminal level. Details matter. Tending to the details can uplift your overall mood and well-being. One of my favorite ways to do this is to do a good space clearing. Flow and energy in the workplace. Ancient spiritual traditions and modern physics agree that matter is made up of energy. When energy is flowing freely, it moves like water with no impediment or stagnation. Our physical spaces are extensions of our bodies. If we are feeling stagnation within our bodies, then this can manifest in our physical space as well. For example, think of a time when you have felt depressed or hopeless. Often this feeling of disempowerment extends to your physical space as well. Dirty dishes and laundry pile up, clutter gathers on surfaces, something in the fridge starts to smell sour. Sometimes the very act of cleansing and clearing can change our emotional state. Cultures all over the world practice energy work through something called space clearing. Space clearing goes beyond cleaning your room or cleaning off your desk and includes clearing your space of stagnant energy. Stagnant energy can develop when a space is exposed to conversations and thoughts with high amounts of negative thought patterns, such as fear, jealousy, hatred, dread, or guilt. In order for work to be joyful, this blocked energy has to be able to flow through and out of your space. Western belief systems downplay the intrinsic energy, vibration, and consciousness of everything around us. Your computer, your chair, and your floor coverings and windows all have an energy, even a consciousness. These energies contribute to the overall feeling and potency of your space. Additionally, the energies in your space respond to and integrate with your energy and intentions. Before you do a space clearing, it's important to have a specific intention in your mind. You might feel focused on increased well-being, abundance, creativity, focus, calm, or a myriad of other desires that you want to see fulfilled. Take a moment to pause and think about one or two intentions that would benefit you and your space. Space clearing can help to reinvigorate your physical and emotional space to promote a spirit of thriving within your workday. It's one thing to clear away the dust and dirt that accumulates over time, as well as clutter and non-useful items in your workspace. These certainly can have a negative impact on your mind, as well as your overall peace and well-being. It's another thing to clear toxic energy from your space 
which can lead to avoidance, procrastination, flagging energy, and much more. If our bodies, minds, and spirits can be ignored in the name of grind culture, then so can our physical spaces. You might think you're too busy to take the time to clear your space or that it won't have any impact, but in those moments when the work seems the most overwhelming or you are at your wit's end, it makes even more sense to tend to your physical space. What's more, you might be surprised by the outcome of taking this time when you feel you can least afford it. Something as simple as cleaning out a drawer can help you reprioritize and reclaim thriving. Beautifying your workspace with flowers, fabrics, or artwork is an easy way to infuse moments of joy at work, even if you have negative feelings about your current place of employment or career path. When you tailor your physical workspace towards the life you want to have, you invite major shifts. Space clearing using the four elements. The elements of water, earth, air, and fire are important tools for creating a sacred workspace that centers balance, flow, and abundance. Earth. The earth element grounds us in physical reality and embodied practice. It connects us to nature and to the cycles of seeding, tending, and harvest that provide powerful guiding metaphors for any kind of work we do. The earth also reminds us about what matters and what doesn't. Here are a few ways to infuse your workspace with the earth element. Sound, drumming, crystal singing bowls, rattles, plants, crystals. We've already discussed the sacred power of sound healing in a previous chapter. Adding a drum, singing bowl, or small speaker to your space can have a huge impact. Living plants and cut fresh flowers refresh the air and balance the energy of electrical or manufactured items in your space. If you don't have a green thumb, never fear. There are several hardy varieties of house plants that will do well in whatever lighting and humidity conditions you have. Just be sure to match the plant's needs with where you plan to put it to make sure it's a good fit. As for crystals, adding a few to your work surface or slipping them into your pocket can bring a sense of peace and harmony to your space. I encourage you to seek out a few to see how they make you feel. Crystals are a part of the earth and they are energetically tuned to different kinds of healing energy. There are a number of reasons given by various crystal experts as to why and how they work, including theories about magnetic energies and color harmonies. But the most important thing, in my opinion, is that they work for you. You can find a number of books that can help you decide the different crystals you'd like to seek, seek out. And I've listed a few of my favorite types of crystals below that have helped me personally detox from grind culture. Alternatively, you can use an intuitive approach, especially if there's a gem or crystal shop in your area. This method involves simply visiting a space where there may be a wide range of options and then seeing where you are led. Try to be as open as possible. You may be surprised by what you find. Some people also like to hold their hands over a selection of stones to see if they feel a warmth or a tingling in their hands to sig signal their need for a specific stone. Here is a small list of my favorite go-to crystals when detoxing from grind culture. Amazonite inspires truth, self-love, communication, and integrity, soothes the brain and the nervous system, balances masculine and feminine energies, soothes emotional trauma, and alleviates worry and fear. Argonite promotes inner balance, mental clarity, confidence, transformation, and ambition promotes self-healing, encourages tolerance, and flexibility. Desert Rose Selenite quiets the mind and eases worry and anxiety, increases our sense of self-worth and self-confidence, and motivates us to act, highlights subconscious thought patterns, and removes blockages related to growth and progress. Leopard Skin Jasper balances chaotic energies, grounds and stabilizes us, 
and promotes courage. Obsidian, shields against negativity and blocks psychic attacks, brings clarity, helps you to know who you truly are. Rose Quartz, deepens self-love and infuses loving energy, abundance, and joy into our lives. Fosters a deep sense of compassion and care, taps into divine feminine energy to help enhance ease and flow at work. Water. Water represents flow, which is essential for our productive and joyful workspace. Many cultures and healing modalities also associate water with our emotional lives, which goes often and gets blocked or repressed within grind culture. We are mostly made of water, so when we incorporate water throughout our workspace, it can promote a healing and soothing atmosphere. Here are a few ways to infuse your workspace with the water element. A water fountain, a spray bottle with essential oils and water, a work bath. A small water fountain that fits on your desk can provide visual and sound stimulation, and it also regulates the humidity in dry spaces. The flow of the water is not only soothing, but it also reminds us to move freely through our work like water over stones. Diluted essential oils are great for freshening up a space and adding a little bit of moisture to the air. Try peppermint and sweet orange when you need to focus. Lavender and ylang-ylang can be wonderful for creating a calm environment. Just be sure to read the labels to ensure your mixture is safe to breathe in. Some are known to be irritants and never apply essential oils directly on the skin. When you're feeling particularly stressed and overwhelmed, taking a bath in the middle of your workday is a great way to facilitate your grind culture detox process. This is obviously most accessible to people who work from home, but I do have a friend who spends an hour soaking and using the sauna at a traditional Korean bathhouse once a week. Perhaps you can negotiate a work from home day a few times a month during which you can incorporate this ritual. Since I've taken the steps to incorporate regular baths into my routine, I've noticed greater focus and clarity, fewer aches and pains, softer skin, and an overall deeper sense of peace. If you're able to, I recommend not bringing your work into the tub. But if this is not working and it seems impossible, there are still ways to reclaim your peace. Use your bath to check your emails or get some calendaring or reading done. Or you could employ this time to get some answers to questions that have been plaguing you and invite yourself to consider another perspective. You can add to your bath water up to a half a pound of salt, Epsom salts, Himalayan salt, or Dead Sea salt. Consider also a few drops of essential oils that promote invigoration, like peppermint, eucalyptus, orange, or lemon. Have plenty of drinking water close by to stave off dehydration and give yourself a good chunk of time, 45 minutes to an hour, to really take in the healing element of water as you work, think, or plan. Banish any guilt that arises. You are cultivating work-life liberation. Air. The air element rules the sharing of intellect through communication, clarity, and beauty. Every minute of our waking hours we spend breathing, and the swirling currents and eddies of wind and weather on the planet impact us in ways large and small every single day. We've all experienced times when our lives have felt stagnant or closed in, and the exhaustion that accompanies grind culture can absolutely amplify these issues. In these times, the element of air can bring insight, clarity, and refreshment. Here are a few ways to infuse your workspace with the air element. An essential oil diffuser, incense, smudging herbs, opening windows and or running fans, breath work. Diffusing essential oils is similar to the water element method with the spray bottle and diluted oils. They both freshen your space with natural oils, but the diffuser hums along consistently in the background. Again, be sure to check the label of whatever oil you're interested in to make sure it won't irritate your lungs and that it's safe for children and pets if they are a part of your household. I love incense and keep it around at home and at work to cultivate a good cozy atmosphere. Try using cinnamon for abundance, patchouli for creativity, or lavender for a sense of calm. Smudging herbs like sage, palo santo, and sweet grass 
are wonderful not just for their scent, but for the promise they offer for wiping a slate clean. Try smudging in between long, tedious meetings and conversations during your workday and notice how the space feels refreshed and renewed. Note that, depending upon where you plan to smudge, you might need to watch out for smoke alarms. It doesn't get very cold in the Bay Area, but even if it did, I would still recommend opening windows and or running fans for a short period to circulate the air in your workspace. Running air conditioning in the summer and heat in the winter can make the indoors seem stale or stuffy. Getting some fresh air in from the outside will rejuvenate the energy in your space. Another way to harness the power of air is with breath work. By taking time out of your day to focus on your breath, you not only give yourself the gift of mindful pauses and breaks, but also boost of refreshing oxygen, a chance to relax any tense muscles, and a reminder to slow down and be present. There are many different kinds of breath work, but even one or two very simple breath work breaks during the day can be helpful. Here's one simple exercise to try. Sit up as straight as you can, wherever you are in this moment. Close your eyes and gently place your hands on your chest. Breathe in steadily for the count of four. Hold your breath for the count of four. Release your breath slowly for a count of four. Pause for a count of four. Repeat this cycle three or four times. When you finish, take note of any sensations in your body. You may feel generally a bit steadier or calmer. If not, that's fine too. These exercises become more powerful the more you do them. Fire. Fire is the element that initiates ideas through action, passion, creativity, and quick reflexes that metaphorically burns away what no longer serves us. All elements are cleansing in their own way, but fire has a dramatic presence that can leave a space spirit feeling bright and clean. Here are a few ways to infuse your workspace with the fire element. Candles, smudging herbs or incense, good lighting, both natural light and filtered or incandescent bulbs. Candles are a classic way to bring the fire element into your workspace, and there are so many versions to choose from. The candle's color may have a significance too. Try green for abundance, blue for clear thinking and communication, or yellow for positive energy. Air activities like smudging and incense are also related to fire. See my notes in the air section above for suggestions on specific types to try. Our sun is a constant fiery presence in our lives and we benefit in ways both emotional and physical when we spend mindful time in direct sunlight. Since we spend so much time at work, you'll want to make sure your lighting there is as good as it can be. Consider the light sources in your space. Does the quality of the light help or hinder your mood and energy? If you have access to natural light, use mirrors to reflect that light and heat into your space from the life-giving sun. If you don't have natural light, structure time in your day to get outside as often as you can. Also, some people do better with filtered light bulbs or incandescent light sources indoors. Fire Purification Ritual Fire is a great purifier, and we are becoming increasingly aware of its importance to the planet. For example, in maintaining the delicate balance of forest ecosystems, one way to engage the cleansing effect of fire in your life is to enact a small fire purification ritual. If you have access to a fire pit or fireplace, this is ideal. But if not, you could perform a version of this ritual with a candle and a fireproof bowl. First, write down some habits, issues, actions, feelings, perspectives, or situations you'd like to move out of your life. When you're done, Choose three from the list and write them on small slips of paper. Then burn each slip of paper in your fire source. If you want to add other ritual elements, such as music or incense, definitely do so. As the paper burns, visualize what your life might be like without these attitudes, actions, or feelings. If prayer or meditation is a part of your practice, this would be a great time for this as well. 
Sacred Workspace Cleanse. This cleanse will help you to remove any heavy, stagnant, or unwanted energies from your workspace and clear the air in both a physical and spiritual sense. It will also help you to attract more focus, relaxation, and flow, as well as to create a space that is pleasing to your mind, body, and spirit. Feel free to adapt any part of this ritual to your own needs and preferences. You will need a smudge stick, try sage, palo santo, or cedar. Incense. To start, clean your space with traditional cleaning products. Organic products are preferred. Make sure dust and cobwebs are removed, floors are swept or vacuumed, and surfaces are wiped clean. Take inventory of any items in your space that aren't being used and don't bring a sense of joy. If you can, remove these things entirely, do so. If you can't, temporarily remove them from your space during the cleanse. Open all of the windows and the doors, then light your smudge stick and set your intentions to clear all energies that no longer serve you. Walk around and use the smoke almost like a paintbrush, gently and methodically sweeping it throughout your space. Make sure to focus on the corners, energy spirals in a circular motion, and stagnant energy can get stuck there. Also focus on areas where you try to hide things away, like the drawer, closet, or file cabinet. Clear the space of any items that no longer are needed and smudge this space as well. During this process, take time to invite any energy that no longer serves you to exit through the open windows and doors, allowing new energy to flow in. Once you've smudged all areas of your workspace, close your windows and doors, then light your incense, taking a moment to set an intention for what you would like to invite into your space. The incense that you choose should be a pleasing, grounding fragrance for you. Some of my favorite blends include frankincense, patchouli, and cinnamon. The last step is very important. If you cleanse your space but don't call in what you want, the old energy will resettle and you won't get the full benefits of the cleanse. If you don't know what you want, consider inviting in purpose, passion, or new inspiration. Complete these, this cleanse as often as you are guided to do so. Furnishing your sacred workspace. Ultimately, you are the authority of what feels best for your workspace. You'll know which items make you feel comfortable, happy, and productive, and which ones just feel like clutter. You'll also know how you want to have things arranged and how you want to present your space to others. Here are a few final ideas of things you might want to incorporate as you're putting the final touches on your space. A yoga mat for stretching, an outdoor workspace option, space for collaboration and privacy, full spectrum light bulbs, multiple light sources, photos and artwork that bring you joy, cozy comforts such as pillows, beanbag chairs, or floor cushions, fidget cubes or puzzles, a balanced ball or a balanced disc, ergonomic furniture, herbal teas and tinctures, heating or cooling pads, air and water filters, a standing desk, a good quality speaker, coffee table books, art books, poetry compilations, or albums, and a record player. Setting workspace intentions. All creation begins with intention. Each day, prior to starting your workday, begin with an intention for what you would like to manifest that day. This can be done through journaling, meditating five minutes prior to your workday, or even practicing a quick yoga stretch. The way you set your intentions is up to you. The important thing is that you do it and remain consistent. A fun way to set and keep your intentions incorporates the plants in your home. Select a house plant that needs to be watered once or twice a week. Set one to three intentions that you want to manifest for your work and write them on small slips of paper. For example, you might write, I am abundant or I attract resources effortlessly. Fold up the notes as small as you can and bury them in the soil of the plant. Then set a reminder to water your intentions and the plant. Make room for moments of pause between waterings to water your intentions. Watch them physically grow and manifest. Visualizing your sacred workspace. Need some help visualizing and manifesting your sacred workspace? 
Create a digital vision board of your ideal space using Pinterest or another program. The images you pick can portray the aesthetic of your workspace, but also how you want to feel in your workspace and the ideas you'd like to foster. Set a reminder to refer back to this vision board to remind yourself of your vision. You can also make a physical version of this board by printing out photos or artwork and attaching them to a poster board. Place it in your workspace and refer to it often to remind yourself of your vision. Thriving Affirmation I am my own sacred space. If you found this recording helpful, consider downloading and purchasing the full book, The Grind Culture Detox, Heal Yourself from the Toxic Intersection of Racism, Capitalism, and the Need to Produce. This book is available wherever books are sold, and it is great for if you are seeking to integrate your healing practice into your daily work schedule. If you're interested in learning more about coaching services and consultation services related to workplace wellness, please click on the link below to learn more about my work and my website. And always remember that you are the key. Until next time, bye.